Hello everyone. So in this video, we are going to see uh, how we can load a file from let's say uh, how we can load a file, any file or a bunch of CSV file we can load from our local system to the GCS bucket using the Airflow. And then from the GCS bucket, we can load all these files in a particular BigQuery data set. Again, we are going to use the uh, Airflow operator for that. And after that, uh, so after loading the file in the BigQuery data set, we can use that data set and all those tables as the source tables. And then we can apply some transformation using the DBT. And then we can create uh, uh, models using the dbt so in this video i'm not going to talk about uh what how to perform the transformation in the dbt and uh, how to run the dbt commands and all so here we are going to see like how we can create a DAG. so basically there are two DAGs in my uh so in this video we are going to discuss one DAG as you can see here on the screen so in one DAG, in the DAG one so we are going to upload. So there are first task in the in that task we are going to upload the file from the local system to the uh, big query. So to the not to big query to the uh, Google Cloud Storage, and then we are going to create a data set. We are going to create a data set in the big query, and then there are uh, four files actually uh, which we are going to upload here, and all those four files I am going to uh upload to the big query tables so whatever the data set i created here so in that data set i'm going to create four tables and i'm going to upload all these four uh using this task i'm going to upload all those all those uh csv file in the big query uh, respective big query tables so this is my dag one this is what i'm doing in the dag one and in the second dag in the DAG2, so in the DAG2, I'm mostly performing the DBT operation. So I'm running the DBT transformation and then I'm running the DBT test in the DAG2. And if you'll see the DAG2, it's a data set trigger. So DAG2 is not a uh, schedule one, so it will be triggered by the DAG1. And uh, for the uh, that uh, for Airflow DAG to create the Airflow DAG and operator, I'm using Astro CLI. So if you'll see, it's very, uh, uh, like, what do you call it? Like, it, it's, uh, you can use the, uh, it, it's very easy to use the Astro CLI uh, compared to the cloud composure, which is a managed airflow service available in GCP. Particularly when you are going to uh, configure your airflow DAG in order to run any kind of a DBT transformation, so you may face some issues like while uh, installing the uh, dbt packages okay so uh, multiple times i have faced that issue like the dbt version will not match with the particular airflow version in the cloud composure so uh, better to use the astro cli and astro cli as i told it's very easy to uh, install and to set up the astro cli on your local system so you need to install the Docker desktop. So as you can see on my system, I'm running this Docker desktop and you can install the Docker desktop. And then after that, you can install the Astro CLI. So just search for uh, Astro CLI for Windows. So once the Docker desktop is installed and it's running, you can go to the official documentation of Astro CLI and go to this manual uh how to install it manually on the windows and here uh you need to install the docker desktop on your system and uh, it, the docker text docker should be running and then you can go to the uh astro cli uh religious repo and from here you can extract you can download the particular .exe file which will be matching with your Windows system, whether you are using a 64 bit or 32 bit, or if you are using Linux or some other operating system. So based on that, you can download the .exe file. And then after that, you need to uh, set up the path variable. You need to change the path variable wherever you are keeping the Astro C, uh, .exe file. So you need to add that environment path on your environmental variable. 
so that that these are the two steps which you need to follow uh, do in order to run the astro cli on your local system and the benefit of using astro cli is like if you are using the cloud composer so if you are using uh, cloud composer which is the managed airflow service in google cloud so uh, definitely you can use that but the thing is that whenever you want to let's say when you are working on the development and you are uh, working on any of the DAG and you are you want to test whether the DAG is running fine or not, you need to upload this DAG to the DAG folder. Then only you will be able to run it on the cloud composer. You cannot run it on the local, uh, on your local environment. You need to upload your DAG. You need to copy your DAG every time to the particular DAG folder. And then only you will be able to test it whether the DAG is working fine or not. So you can uh, avoid that and get you can just uh, set up the Astro CLI. Uh, so it's an open source uh, tool which is available by the uh, Astronomer uh, uh, company. So they have this Astro CLI tool and it's an open source tool. And that is the the the, the Astro CLI we are going to use here in this uh, particular video. So to set up the DAG and all, we are going to use the Astro CLI. So my Docker is running fine. And as I, I told, there are two DAGs which I have set up. So uh, in this video, as I told, I'm not going to talk about the BT transformation and uh, how to write the models and all. Maybe I'll create a separate video for that. So here, as you can see, there are two uh, DAG. One is the, uh, this is the upstream DAG, which is the DAG one. So in this DAG, I'm creating the data set. This is the reference data set. And using this data set, I'm going to trigger the second DAG, which is the uh, BQDBT DAG. So in this DAG, what I'm doing, I'm using the local file to GCS operator. And I have created this in tool data set. So basically all these files and folder will be created once you will, after you install the Astro CLI. So you just need to run the Astro dev init command. It's going to initialize the files and folder for you. So, uh, and then after that, uh, I'll, I'll uh, tell you like how to start running the DAG. So uh, in this DAG, as I was telling, we have I have the all this data set I have uh, stored inside the include folder. If you see, these are the four data set which I have stored, and all this data set I'm going to copy to my bucket uh, to this bucket, and this bucket is present on the uh, Google Cloud. So if you I'll go to Google Cloud and Cloud uh, Cloud Storage, and so all this bucket, just now I ran the DAG. So maybe the uh, this bucket is already created. So we are not going to create the bucket from the DAG, but all these folders we are creating and I can delete it. Uh, so I'm going to run the DAG. So this folders will be created again and the files will be uploaded to this folder. Similarly, uh, so this is the first thing what I'm doing. After that, I'm creating an empty data set in the BigQuery table. And uh, so this is the data set name, which I'm going to create a detailed data set. So right now the data set is also available as you can see. I'm going to delete the data set as well. So let me delete it. Okay, so I'm creating an empty data set in the next operator. And then what I'm doing, so I'm using the cloud storage to BigQuery operator in order to copy the file from the uh, cloud storage bucket, which I uploaded from my local. And then I'm uh, up, uh, loading those files to the BigQuery tables. So you don't need to create the table uh, uh, in advance. So the tables will be created while the files will be copied to the BigQuery. So if the table is not present, it, it's going to create the table. So that, that's why I have mentioned the create a disposition parameter as create if needed. So it's going to create the table while uploading the data to the uh, BigQuery uh, tables. And these are the table name. 
So as you can see, the table names are uh, similar to the file name. So that is what I'm doing in the first uh, tag. And once, as you can see here on the last uh, task, I have this outlet parameter, outlet parameter. So it's going to tell the big query. So it's going to tell the uh, airflow that this data set is updated. And now whatever the DAG, whichever the DAG has the dependency on this data set, those DAG will get triggered automatically because the upstream DAG is completed successfully and the downstream DAG or the whichever the DAG has the dependency on this data set. Uh, so the, that DAG is going to get triggered. And uh, that is how the downstream DAG, which is where I'm doing the DBT operation. So that DAG will get triggered. So this is the DAG where I have, uh, I'm using the same data set uh, name. And then you can see on the schedule. So this data set, uh, this is a data set trigger DAG. There is no scheduling time interval uh, I have put. So this DAG will be get triggered by as soon as once the upstream DAG is completed. And then in this DAG, what I'm doing, I'm running the dbt command. So uh, in order to run the dbt model, uh, we are using the dbt run command. And then uh, uh, to test the model, we are using the dbt test command. So in Airflow, sorry, in the Astro, what I have done, I, I have created the uh, virtual environment. So basically, as you can see here, I'm going to this folder. So this is the uh, include.dbt folder, as you can see here, inside the dbt folder, I have the models folder, I have the uh, profiles folder, and the dbt pro, uh, pro, uh, uh, packages and all, all, all the dependency folder. So it's going to, it's going inside that folder and then it is activating the virtual environment. So I have already created uh, the virtual environment when I am uh, uh, doing the setup for the Astro. So that time the virtual environment will be created. So we'll see here inside the Docker file, I'm creating the virtual environment, okay. And I'm installing all the dependency, all the dbt BigQuery dependency on that virtual environment. That same virtual environment will be used when I'm running this dbt run command. So that virtual environment, it, it will go inside that uh, folder, folder file. And then after that, it's going to activate the virtual environment. And then it's going to run the dbt run command so that all my models will be created. And then I'm running the dbt test command. So I'm not going into in detail of how a dbt run command works and how the models should be created. Maybe uh, we'll discuss that in, in another video, but this is what it's going to do. So when uh, once you have initialized your directory and you have uh, uh, done the setup, once you have all done the all the transformation, so you can start the you can run astro dev start command, and it's going to uh, install all the dependency package, and then it in, in it's going to create a Docker container. So it has already created as you can see this is the container, and inside the container you can see all these files are running. So uh, there is a file for. So inside this container, you can see there is a post grid and scheduler and for the web server. So uh, right now it is uh, starting the container. So let's wait once the container is up and then we'll be able to interact with the Airflow web server. So let's wait for some time. So as you can see now, the all the containers for the uh, post grid, which where uh, the metadata of the airflow will be maintained and the container for the uh, scheduler and the web solver and the trigger, all, all the containers are started and it's running. You can also check that here on the uh, on your Docker desktop as well. All these containers are running. And then you can also see the uh, UI user interface link. So the airflow will be running on the 8080 local host. So you can go to the 8080 local host and you can see the, you'll be able to see all your DAG. So as we discussed, there are two DAGs here. 
So one is the uh, upstream DAC, which is going to trigger the DBT DAC. So let me repress it. So uh, as you can see, I have already, so there is no tables table and also I deleted the, uh, the, the cloud storage bucket as well. So now I'm going to trigger this DAC and this DAG, once this DAG is completed, the next DAG where we are running the dbt run and dbt test command, that DAG will get triggered. So let's wait once this DAG is completed. So we don't need to trigger the downstream DAG because that is the data set trigger. So as you can see, it will go to the DAG's list. And here you can see, uh, so this is the data set trigger DAG. You can see it is the data set trigger and it depends on this data set. And also one more thing I want to tell is uh, like we are running all these DAGs and the operator from the local machine. So you need to create a DB, uh, big, sorry, you need to create a GCP connection. So as you can see, I have created this GCP connection so where you need to provide you need to provide the connection id name and then the uh, google cloud account the connection type and then you need to provide the path where you have kept your service account uh, service account key so if you see on my files uh, so inside the include file uh, here i have stored my inside the include we'll see uh, where uh, include GCP. So let's go here. And here you can see inside the include and GCP, I have uh, put my service account JSON file. So you need to create a connection, then only you'll be able to run the DAX and the uh, operator. So let's go to the DAG and let's see. So now you can see it, uh, the second DAG is running automatically because that is the data set trigger DAG. And you can see this DAG uh, has triggered automatically once the uh, first DAG has completed. So you can also validate that if you go to your data set, uh, sorry, the cloud storage bucket, we can see the folder has been created and all the files are uploaded to this folder. Similarly, if you go to the big query, uh, let's refresh it and you can see the table is already created and now it, it has started creating the staging tables and the uh, reporting tables which are part of the dbt transformation okay so let's wait once this dbt run is completed So in the airflow like uh, UI, you can also see the graph view as well. So this is a very good way of running the airflow uh, in your local environment that you can uh, run it, you can test it while working on the development. You can see like if there is any issue in any of the tasks. So I will recommend to use this Astro CLI. Uh, so I find it really useful and uh, very efficient like while working on the particularly creating a to DAG and operator because when you are using the cloud composure only, uh, so that time like you need to upload your DAG, you need to copy your DAG to the DAG folder, then only you'll be able to run it on the cloud composure. But here you can run it on the locally and you can, if there is any issue on any of the DAG, you can see the error, you can go to the logs and uh, you can see if there is any error in the logs and then you can fix it. And then the uh, modified DAG will be automatically appear on the UI. So that's the advantage of using Astro CLI and it's open source, you can use it. So the DBT run has completed and we can also validate the, uh, the tables are already created, I think. So you can see all the dimensions table, the fact table, reporting tables, all the tables are created in the uh, big query. Okay. 
So this way, like we can uh, use the dbt BigQuery and uh, we can also trigger the DAG using the dataset trigger. So that's all I had for this video. Thank you.